What's going on, everybody? Michael Silva here. You're watching the Stock Market Brief Show. We got to talk about the market continuing to get it wrong. And when I say that it's getting wrong, I'm talking about what it's pricing in as far as forward-looking volatility. Now, we know that we track these expected moves here every day when we see where price action is on them from a daily perspective, a weekly perspective. We even show monthly and quarterly perspectives. Now, we just had the fourth week, fourth out of five weeks, I should say, that we close outside of the expected move. And if you don't know what that is, this is, once again, what the market is looking forward as potential risk. It gives us a range of risk and within a standard deviation, 68% probability that price is going to close within that range. Now, in the prior episode, we talked about how we were reaching a two sigma level and two standard deviations. There's a 95% chance that we close within it. And you can see price started to get outside of it on the last trading day of the week, but we reverted and we closed back within that uh, a, a two standard deviation move. So we're going to be giving some updated levels on that and discuss all kinds of stuff on today's show. If we take a look at the week to date performance, that's this column over here. You can see semiconductors led the way. We had copper that did good. And then surprisingly, right over here, you have QQQE. That's equal weight. They were up 4% on the week. And then towards the bottom, you can see over here, you had the 10-year yield that dropped off. And then you also had the dollar that dropped off. Bitcoin had some gains early on, but it closed flat on the week. So it is interesting to see that from an intermarket perspective, when you get a rapid movement down in the dollar, you can see other assets really start to accelerate. Now, if we take a look at the semiconductors on the daily time frame, you can see it actually crested into new all-time high territory here, and then it started reverting back down. If you take a look at BKX, this is the banking index. We are starting to have financials, um, uh, Sorry, um, not just financials, but we're starting to have earnings season where the financials are reporting earnings. You can see we actually started off pretty well gapping up, but we completely reversed on the day like many stocks did on Friday. And uh, you can see that in uh, Wells Fargo over here, how we gapped up during earnings, but we closed at the low. Citigroup, same thing. We had JPM, very similar situation. And going into next week, we have um, more coming out. We have Morgan Stanley, Bank of America, Goldman Sachs. Uh, a couple other names we have is Netflix, Tesla, IBM. These are the ones that are reporting in the S&P 100. What made this market go up to have such good weekly performance? What kicked it off? Well, we did have that CPI report come out. And yes, it is coming down there, but we're still far away from that 2% level, which is the Fed goal. And you can see that in the Ju July report here, we are coming in for a probability of a 25 basis point uh, rate hike still there's a 96 percent probability of that going looking out to september you can see that the probabilities of a rate another 25 basis point have kind of decreased here uh, but you can still holding relatively flat or pausing in the september remains uh elevated so it looks like we might be coming into a pause unless there are some other changes that take place there if we take a look at the 10-year yield, we broke out and we came back in. Perhaps we're trying to find some support. Maybe this is just a back test before we potentially head higher, or this is just a bull trap and we start to head back lower. This move down and a rapid rate of change definitely um, could have what helped propel the move in the tech sector, which I'll show you the heat map here momentarily. If we take a look at the yield curve, the yield curve uh, remains deeply inverted at 91 basis points. The 10-year and three-month remains uh, 166 basis points inverted. And then what I find interesting here is if you take a look at the three month, I mean, this thing looks like it's coiling up. And if I zoom in on this on the three month treasury, you can see kind of has the um, characteristics of a volatility contraction pattern where you see this dip, a, a, a smaller dip, and then even a smaller dip. So things are coiling up. And remember markets, they move between expansion and contraction. So is this thing setting off to maybe see another strong move? It's, it's always a possibility and we have to be um, open-minded to that. But when you look at this on a longer-term basis, looking back towards you know the dot-com uh, era, 2000, 2001, that's where price is right now. Looking back, so you know breakout higher, maybe we get to six percent, maybe we go to where we were as far as the peak in in the dot-com um, era. Now, you might be thinking, okay, well, wh why is it important when we have a yield curve inver inversion and perhaps when we see the Fed pause or start to reduce rates? Well. As we've noted in prior videos, when we have a yield curve, curve inversion, this has been the best predictor of a recession around the future. And then when we know about Fed raising rates, there's a lag effect to it. It could take you know, 15 months to 18 months. There's a bunch of different data on that. But when the yield curve begins to uninvert, that's and, and, and the Fed starts to reduce rates, so the yield curve uninverts, uninverts, reduce rates, 
inverted right here, reduce rates, you can see that there. that's when typically you get some market reaction. It doesn't necessarily have to be always you know horrendous but we need to be aware that hey you know the market's doing pretty good right over here we're not at all-time highs but we're seeing a nice big move up but we're also doing this while the yield curve is still uninverted so we don't know what the market's going to look like if this thing has to uninvert or if the fed starts to having to reduce rates at a rapid rate of change or slamming it back down to zero the, the reason why they would have to slam it back down to zero quick um, despite seeing you know inflation still above two percent would mean that something would have had to have broken um, at least that would be my interpretation if they had to do that and go back against their word of you know keeping inflation or getting it down to that two percent if we take a look at the heat map overall on a year-to-day basis you can see the apple google amazon tesla these are the ones that are the big winners on the year nvidia up over 200 percent on a year-to-date basis. You're starting to see more green now start across the board. It was pretty much just the big mega cap stocks and then everything else kind of seemed red, but now we're starting to see a little bit broadening of this market rally. And if you take a look at the SPY on the daily time frame, we do have a negative divergence on the RSI as we're starting to get this potential, you know, that cup and handle that we discussed and reclaim the quarter day anchor VWAP, we moved up higher. So just be aware that we are getting a little frothy in these areas and I'll show you that on some uh, bullish percent charts too as well uh, but overall the uptrend is intact we have higher highs sorry higher lows and higher highs as it stands now but we'll get a little bit more tactical on the 15 minute time frames if you take a look at the cues we did have a shooting star type candle not too far off the all-time highs but we do have that negative divergence building these are fairly rare we haven't seen these too frequently so for example in the spy we saw that leading into 2022 and now we see it right now leading into the month of august um, that's for the SPY and then for the Qs, it's the same situation. Not, you don't really get these negative divergences all too frequently, but you can just basically, what this tells you is it's slowing momentum from an RSI perspective, right? So you have a high to a higher high, but yet the momentum is slowing down here on that indicator. So if we take a look at the 15 minute time frame on the SPY, you can see that we're above the five day moving average. We're above that green line, which is the quarter to date. We're above the um, prior week, right? We closed above last week's anchored VWAP there too as well. And then we're slightly under the uh, high, swing high anchored VWAP. So as you can see, price, we ran up. Now we're taking a little bit of a breather. It could very well be flagging here, which can put us up to the upper daily expected move at 451.66. Above that is the weekly expected move at 454.96. And then you have these levels down here beneath us, the lower daily and the lower weekly. So overall, when I look at this, I'm saying, I'm thinking, okay, well, we have a high, a low, we have a higher low, we have a higher low, a higher low, we have a high low, and we have a currently a higher low here. Then we have a higher high, higher high, higher high, and it's above the quarter to date, and it's above the five-day moving average, which is inclining. So yeah, even though that we kind of extended in this, what you'd want to see is price to maybe you know, breathe out a little bit more, let the five-day moving average catch up, maybe even let the, the, the two-week anchored view catch up a little bit, and then if price does come down into these areas, you can start to look to build out a long position uh, because we would still be in theory holding the higher highs and higher lows. Now, if we hit the lower weekly expected move, that's also in confluence with this prior data over here. And it would be right around that quarter to date anchored VWAP, month to date anchored VWAP, quarter to date, it's the same thing right here. And that's also in confluence with the July low anchored view up. So even if price were to come all the way down here, it could create some opportunities. You know, it might scare some people. We might fill a gap, right? It, you know, it might flush out or shake out some people, but then we might see a base built on lower time frames to potentially play a move to continue the current trend. The time where you want to get a little bit more cautious is when we're below the five day moving average, uh, below the week to date, which we'll get that updated tomorrow. Uh, and then it starts to flatten out to start to curl over. But as it stands, we're just not there yet. Uh, if we take a look at the cues, also potentially, right? Uh, flagging over here too as well. We have all the anchored VWAPs, five day moving average that we look at, quarter to date, week to date, which is gonna be the two week anchored VWAP. We have the low over here and we have the lower uh, weekly expected move. So even if price were to come from 379 and drop $8, right? Just to 371 over here, we would still be in confluence with a bunch of supports. And now, yes, the market's been getting it wrong. So we need to be aware that, hey, when you know we had a two standard deviation move this last week and we're only pricing in for the SPY like a $5 expected move, but we've been seeing these moves take place in a single day. So Monday, right, we might open here. We might open down here or we might hit it, you know, come tomorrow or the next day or, or hit up here. So you just need to be just... Uh, 
um, a little bit more cautious and, and cognitive that or, or tactical, I should say, when price starts to reach outside of these levels. And the reason for that is because what's known as hedging, right? Dynamic hedging, the market's wrong, so they need to correct that. And that's what we've been seeing here is, well, when the market gets it wrong, they correct it. So buying, but gets more buying, but gets more buying, and you get these squeezes um, to the upside, but those squeezes can also right happen to the downside. So overall on the queues, we have a series of higher highs, higher lows, uptrends intact, five-day moving averages moving up. We're below the obviously the high for the anchored VWAP from the um, July high, and we're above the July low anchored VWAP. So as price, if it were to you know consolidate within this area, these would probably come in together a little bit closer, and you'd want to see how price responds and eventually tries to turn up up through this anchored view up from the high and as long as it holds these levels down here so the opportunity for long would be more into this range or when they start moving up as price if price goes sideways or if it even comes and consolidates more these will move up into that level as price is trading above it and then we could start to look at potential opportunities to trade into it other than that you need to be a little bit just more patient in uh as it stands right now, or look and be very tactical from an intraday scalping perspective. Now, if I take a look at some of the bullish percent charts, you can see here, NASDAQ bullish percent index, negative divergence, and we're getting pretty frothy here um, uh, as it stands, but I'll show you some other ones that I find interesting. NDX, NASDAQ 100, also getting to that 80 reading over here where the RSI is getting extended. Um, the NYSE, right? It came, it, it was overextended, came down, it got overextended, came down got back into overextended territory and it's at a 62.5 reading as it stands right now so a little bit overbought there too as well the spx is at an 85.05 reading we haven't seen that for quite some time so you know typically when you see it drop back down below 70 um and this is the rsi but if we see the bullish percent just drop below 70 right when it gets above drops below we saw some weakness got above drop below saw some weakness got above got above drop below we saw some weakness and so forth so I would be watching for that. Uh, BPOEX, which is the S&P 100, also RSI is getting extended. If we look at some sectors, this one I found interesting. This is the transport sector. We're getting a 100 reading, and we've been there a few times because you can see it's a little bit more choppier, less equities being tracked here on the bullish percent index. But as you can see, we saw this strong move. We're getting uh, you know overbought rating, and then the RSI is at over 90. It's 91.9. So this doesn't hold like this you know, forever, it's going to cycle back down to oversold conditions and take a breather at some point. So I looked, I'm like, okay, when's the last time we've been here? And if you look back to the left of the screen, well, we haven't been here since 2018. We saw that big, huge move up into 2018. And then what happened? Well, it consolidated and then it got back into oversold conditions and it sold off, right? So it has to take a breather at some point. Does that mean it's signaling that right now at this moment? Not necessarily, um, but because overbought can stay overbought for quite some time, but you just need to be aware that, hey, things are frothy and that's just what it is. If you look at the tech sector, you can see here also getting pretty frothy, almost reaching into the 90 reading over here. And as we've seen prior readings get up pretty extended before, you've seen um, the market consolidate or pull back uh, prior and you can see that there is a negative divergence still here as well we have a high higher high higher high but yet the rsi has been diverging look at discretionary also getting pretty frothy over at 85 the last time we were there was in february where we started to take a breather and you can just see how it goes overbought and it gets back to oversold and then it rotates back to overbought and then it goes back to oversold so we're just in that overbought condition as it stands financials also right they're reporting earnings but we are in overbought condition there and we saw today or not not today but on friday some of them report earnings how they started way up higher but then they started fading throughout the day. If we take a look at the industrial sector, also getting pretty frothy up here too as well. The last time we were here was the August uh, peak where we started to kind of sell off there. Doesn't necessarily mean that's going to happen, but you just need to be aware that, like I said, these things rotate from overbought to oversold. So is it the best time to be buying industrials right here? Or I should say XLI? Um, maybe, maybe not, right? Maybe it just needs more time to consolidate and flag out, but it has been on a massive move um, in recent uh, weeks. Uh, that's all I got for you on today's episode, everybody. Hope it helped out and gave you those key levels on the weekly and the daily expected moves for the spies and the cues. I'll see you back here on the next episode. Bye.